Hello and welcome to YouTube's most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga channel. It's Q here with Hold and Modify. Yes, and I'm delivering on my promise of a FS UAE overview, uh, very similar to the one I did for the uh, Win UAE. Uh, FS UAE is available for Mac and Windows, I believe Linux as well. Uh, I'm going to cover this on the Mac side because this is pretty much the only way to do Amiga on the Mac. It's not the only way, but it is the most popular and common way. And much everything I'll be discussing and showing here uh, will translate directly to the uh, Windows version, so no worries there. So you're going to download this program, grab the latest version of, of this publication, it's 3.05. I am on a M1 MacBook Air. However, I am not using the new beta ARM version of uh, FSUAE. I figured I would just stick to the regular x86 version, and I'm using, of course, Rosetta 2 on Mac OS to uh, run these non-ARM programs. They work, Rosetta 2 works very, very well. It's a very good uh, uh, emulator Apple has written for their own stuff. Um, so, having said that, uh, one of the first things uh, you want to do, just much like my Win UAE video, and again, I will put the Win UAE video um, at the uh, at the end of this video, so that um, you'll be able to hear that beep and know that it's time to uh, take the take the garbage out. Uh, anyway, I will put a um, a link to the Win UAE video. Uh, in this video at the end, so you can watch that as well if you haven't watched it. And then it also will help maybe cover some things if you feel like I skipped around too much in this, because FSUAE and WinUAE are two completely different animals. The first thing you're going to notice about FSUAE, it's a much more simplified uh, interface. It's, it's definitely tailored to the more casual user. It does not have a lot of the features, and um, you can't really drill down, so to speak, you know, get under the hood as much as you can with WinUAE. Uh, WinUAE has uh, a really, really open and, and architecture and just allows you to, to, to adjust so many different things. Whereas the FS UAE here is pretty straightforward. I mean, I love the iconography they use for things like, you know, here's your home screen. Here's where you, you set floppies with the floppy disk icon. This is where you handle your CD-ROM stuff. Here's your hard drives. Here's your ROM and your RAM. Here's your, your, your input devices like your mouse and your joystick. Um, and then you have your expansion cards and then kind of like a general settings thing. And that's almost it. I mean, there are some more things in this little menu button over here. You can click left or then you can go into like settings. And they do give you some more uh, stuff that you can kind of dig into. But a lot of the stuff you're going to see uh, requires you to reference uh, the forums and the manual to uh, actually input and change certain things. But a lot of this here, some of this may look familiar uh, from when UAE. So it, a lot of this stuff from WinUAE is here. I should, I should correct myself and, and say that it's not that it's absent from FSUAE. It's just kind of deprioritized. You don't really need to get into this too much unless you're having uh, some real wacky problems. But we are going to get into this menu. And uh, with that ridiculously uh, convoluted and too long intro into what this is, let's get into this program. So you'll install it. You'll launch it. And one of the first things I'm going to recommend when you run the launcher is that you click on this little upper left dingus here and you go into, mine says log out, you're going to go to log in and you're going to uh, create an account over at Open Retro. Uh, the reason you want to do this is because you're looking at the screen right now and you're seeing all these games over here, 1869, 1869 AGA, and you're seeing these thumbnails pop up down here and it's like, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. 68 attack sub, huh, look at that. So this is a very kind of like, if you're familiar with the program iGame on uh, Amiga OS, this is kind of like an iGame type thing where you're getting thumbnails and you're getting all software. Now, where is all this coming from? Well, this is coming from the free Open Retro account you create. Once you create that account, it'll start downloading uh, database information for all of these games. And what this is, this isn't just a list of games and pretty thumbnails. This actually configures all of the Amiga settings and inserts the proper disks all for you. So if you don't want to get into actual the nuts and bolts of Amiga emulation and, 
and make a workbench install and, and, and install WHD load. And uh, this is just kind of like a, a very quick way to just get in and start playing the games. Uh, if the most you might have to do is configure a joystick, but FSUE is really smart in that if you have your joystick plugged in before you start it, a lot of times it'll just show up here automatically and you don't even have to worry about it. And your mouse is pretty much always detected as you can see here along with your keyboard because it's gonna use the system mouse and keyboard. So there's nothing you have to do except create that account, log in, wait for it to download the list of games and off you go. Now you're thinking, wait, so all these games, I mean, you know, are, is, is this legal? Well, that is an interesting question. So when this program first came out, you see this little yellow arrow here? What you had to do is that you would double click and it would automatically start downloading the ADF files for the game. It would download them to a temporary location, thus allowing you to play the game. And again, it would automatically mount the floppies for you, the virtual floppies, you'd play the game. When you were done, it would remove those floppies from your computer. So it's, it's interesting how that was working. Something must have happened. So I'm not sure because that is, that's no longer the case. Now what happens is it's, it, it brings this pop-up when you double click and it says, hey, you need to go to this location and download the game there yourself. And then once you do that, it'll go to this FSUE download folder and then you can say scan downloads and you can slowly build up, I guess, an archive of games. I'm this, the legality of all this and the, how this process works, that's not really our concern. The point is that you have immediate access to a host of games here that you don't really require much from you other than just double clicking and then clicking a link to go download the files and then FSUE will take care of the rest for you. It'll mount everything, the floppies, you'll see them pop up in here. In fact, you can already see here, there's this um, crazy SHA location, which is you know, some kind of virtual link to the, the download location. It's even got the floppy list down here for you, the media swap list. This is how it autom automates the flopping of swappies. So that's this whole process. This is, this is the, I just wanna play video games on the Amiga process. So that's why you want to create that account. You'll get this list. You can, you can search the list. Now let's say like Shadow the Beast, right? Not everything is in here. So I type in Shadow and you can see it's adjusting what's available. So I don't know if this is part of, of the legality that they've gotten clearances to have the games in this list because obviously not all the games are in there. Um, like the Gunship games are in there, which of course you know I love. Um, I talk about those in my other videos. So those are there. So it, it's just, it's really interesting um, what is there and what isn't? Uh, like Super Frog, okay, Super Frog is there. What about Awesome, another Psygnosis game? Yeah, so it's like nothing from Psygnosis is in this, this database. So that could be a, a clue to what's going on. So that's, that's it. I mean, you would just double click this game, download the files, it'll launch and off you go. You're playing, you're playing Amiga games. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory, I mean, I guess the part I showed you was just, you know, making sure you go down to create that magic account. Now, what if you're not interested in any of that? You want to actually emulate the Amiga and build your own workbench. Well, that's a little different. That is a lot closer to um, what I showed you in my WinUAE video. So again, a lot of what I'm doing here, uh, I already did with WinUAE. But one of the first things you want to do is you're going to have to import your ROMs. So you can get your ROMs, as I mentioned in the other video, from Amiga Forever or you can buy OS 3.2 from Hyperion, and I'll put those links in the uh, description as well. And then you have access to your ROMs. You copy those ROMs onto your computer somewhere where you can access them from this program. And again, click on the Amiga check mark, and you're gonna go into, you've got two options. If you have the Amiga Forever ISO, you, you can do direct support of Amiga Forever right here. You just go Amiga Forever import, it'll ask where the DVD is, and you can say import, and it'll automatically start scanning in and bringing in everything off the disk. So and technically, you don't even need to copy the ROMs off the Amiga Forever disk to your computer. This will do it for you. Or, of course, you can just import Kickstart yourself. It brings up the same exact screen. It lets you down uh, know here down below the available Kickstart that's going to have. As you can see, it's definitely less than what WinUE supports. Again, this is a much more optimized experience. So you go to Browse, and in my case, my stuff is, um, where is my stuff? Yeah, my stuff is over here on my, my NAS, Amiga, and then I've got like a ROMs folder. I'm gonna select that, click open, uh, and then say import. And then now it's gonna go through and start bringing in all the ROMs and text. You can see it uh, 
done. It didn't take too long. And so you can see all the green check marks. So it found ROMs for all the things it wants to find. Now, here's another interesting thing. You see all these little arrows I mentioned before, the little download arrows and all the list of games. Well, some of you may have something called the Amiga Tossek, which contains a archive of every single Amiga game in existence. If you have that folder somewhere available, you can go to update file and update game database. Now, when you do this, I'm sorry, let me hit stop. I made a mistake. The update game database is the virtual downloads I was talking about earlier at the beginning of this video. That's what that is. That's in case there's been changes. If they've added new support, maybe they added Shadow of the Beast, you could find out by doing the update game database. So update file database. This is where you give the program paths to where you keep your files. So kickstarts, configurations, that, that type of thing. And you can add your, your paths here. One of the things you could do is you could click the little plus button. You could then navigate to your Tossack and find that games ADF folder and click open. Now, upon doing that, you'll hit the scan button and it'll start scanning. This is, that would take, I'm not gonna show you here because it's a very long process. It will go through and it will scan in every single ADF game you have. Now, those games, if it recognizes them, it will cross-reference them with settings from this account that you've created down here when you logged in and created that open retro account. So that instead of having to download 1869 from their, their website, it'll know that you've got 1869 already locally and it'll launch it but it'll launch it using the settings from its database so again you don't have to configure anything which is very nice now what about if uh it, after scanning all your games in you go up here and you type in shadow and sure enough in, in your scan you have you know shadow of the beast listed here is it going to have settings for shadow of the beast probably not so when you click on shadow of the beast it'll show you the floppies but you're going to have to configure uh, the Amiga to run Shadow of the Beast. Uh, but that is that is a way to see all these little arrows turn into little joysticks. So if you have the files locally, these little arrows will turn into little joysticks and that way at a glance you know, oh hey, I actually have that file locally on my computer and I can play it. Um, so just remember, little gizmo up here, update file database, add your folder, click scan, wait forever, and then you'll see all your games that you have show up here. And a lot of them will have auto configurations, but some of them you may need to set. Um, so that's another way to get all of your games in here and go. And as you can see here, it says configs and games. You can also just show games and you can also just show configs. Now, we don't have any configs. For the next part of this video, I'm going to leave this on configs. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to make a, um, I don't know, let's, the last video I did a, a 3000. We'll do a 1200. So I'm just going to type in 1200. I know that's very descriptive. And then this little, um, well, I'm sorry, I typed that in the wrong spot. Uh, unnamed configuration, <laughs> I'm gonna type in 1200, okay? And then this little is the save button. So right now you're like, if you click save, it's just gonna, here, click save. So there you go, now you've got your 1200 config. Obviously it's not a 1200 config, we, it says Amiga 500. So one of the first things you can do on the home screen is just go up here and make it easy on yourself and just click 1200. It's gonna use the 3.1 ROM. This is using the ROM that it found when it scanned all my ROMs. And if you click on the ROM, these are all the ROMs it found. So it's like, yeah, I found a 3.0 ROM, a 3.1, 3.1020, all these various ROMs it found, including some accelerator ROMs, which is pretty slick. I'm then gonna go and make this an NTSC because I'm weird. And then under floppy, for now, I'm gonna leave it alone. No CD, hard drive. So here's where it gets a little interesting. So you're like, okay, well, in the WinUE program, I, I like to use hard files, H HDF files. You can use those. In fact, any of the hard files you created in WinUE, you can use with FSUE. They're cross-compatible cross because it's just a, a format. So what you need to do is cl click this, the magic button over here, little Amiga check mark, and do your HDF creator. And here you can say a uh, partitionable hard drive, which is an RDB, or just kind of a basic, you know, emulation-friendly HDF file. We're going to do the basic emulation friendly HDF file. It has a default path. You, you can change it. And I'm going to name this one something amazing like A1200. 
Now, if you want to create, much like I said in my WinUE video, if you want to create partitions like workbench, work, storage, and so on, do it here. Don't use the HD toolbox in Amiga OS. I mean, it's, you, can, you can get it to run, but as I said in my WinUE video, it can just be a pain in the butt. Just create your partitions here, and, and they can be small. If you only want a, a, a 20 megabyte workbench, then make it a 20 megabyte workbench. If you want a one gigabyte storage, make a one gigabyte storage, and so on. But for now, I'm just gonna create a single hard drive for the single partition called A1200 HDF. I mean, you could call it DH0 HDF if you wanted to, if that makes you, you know, if it's something you'd prefer. You can call it whatever you want. So we're gonna hit create. So now that's created. And using the path with the defaults is just gonna make me showing you how to use things easier here. So here, if you wanna use a directory to, to build your Amiga, you can, just like in WinUEE, or you can use the file, the hard file. And so you click that button, and sure enough, there's the hard file we created. You click open, it plops it in there. Next, we can go to the Kickstart ROM. Now, when we went back here on the home screen, we picked model Amiga 1200, it automatically preset some things. So one of the things it preset was it's using default Kickstart ROMs and all those settings. So it's, it's already set to be an Amiga 1200. In fact, you see how chip RAM's unchecked, but over here it says two megabytes. So it's giving it two megabytes. Nothing else, just, just like a real base model 1200, there's nothing else picked. Now you can override, like none of this stuff is turned on, so you sound card, graphics, blizzard, network, all this kind of stuff, accelerator board. All of that is off, the JIT's even off, the CPU is a 68EC020, which is correct for a base 1200, so even that is turned off. Now of course, you can immediately override the defaults by just clicking the checkbox and picking something else, right? So I'm not gonna do that for now. I'm gonna turn that off. If you go back to home, on the ROM here, one of the ROMs was 3.1, 60 to 20. Click that, and if you go back over here, doo -doo -doo -doo, you're going to see that it is now a 60 to 20 proper, not an EC. So now you've got your, your FPU in there. So the ROM configuration here will change the settings for you. In fact, if I pick on an expansion board like the old Blizzard here, I think under, so accelerator board is unchecked, but it's selecting a Blizzard 1230 version four. So it is selected. You're going to be emulating it with a Blizzard. So again, a little different from WinUE. It's kind of, it has this like preset auto config, even for expansions, which is a little weird to get used to. But like, again, if you just go to like, let's untoggle and go back to 1200, it's gonna just go back to the basic Amiga 1200, okay? And you got accuracy, by the way, I didn't comment on that, but it defaults to high, and yes, you just wanna leave that to high. Um, but that's what this whole, that's all these little checkboxes. So you can override any of those settings. Like if you're building your own Amiga and you don't wanna use this preset, you can just start going over here and, and, and typing in systems. You can pick your own ROM, um, there's the default, and then you can do custom internal, you can go, find your own ROM, you can change the chip, the slow, the fast, all the, the, all the things you could normally change, just like in WinUE, you can do here. Um, you can, yes, you can even pick a sound card. I have a, a BIOS file for a Toccata, so you're seeing Toccata show up here. But that's, that's all I have. Um, the, B, the BSD socket library is here, so that you can have easy automated uh, internet support on your emulated Amiga if you choose to do that. Uh, under accelerator board, if we click on there, you're gonna see like, again, kind of mirroring the ROMs I had. I have all these ROMs and BIOS files for these accelerator cards. So yes, even the CyberStorm PowerPC. But no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep it basic. And then over here, um, I am gonna go ahead and cheat a little bit and I'm gonna add um, a little bit of fast RAM. I'm gonna just click fast RAM and I'm gonna do like, uh, I don't know, like one megabyte. Just, just to help out a little bit. You know what, let's, let's, let's do two. Yeah, let's, let's be spoiled. Uh, we'll do two megabytes. So now we've got this 1200 configured and you can kind of understand hopefully how, how you can pick systems and how just from this pull down and even the ROM selection automates a lot of the selections here. But we need floppies because one of the things it doesn't do, it doesn't, it doesn't have the floppies. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You could populate all four floppies and then do your classic Amiga you know, I have four floppy drives and have all the floppies in there. Or you can also create a media swap list. So what happens is once the emulation starts, you can always come back to the screen just like WinUEE and insert another floppy drive. Or, or sorry, another floppy disk. 
So when it asks for, you know, the fonts disk on install, you can come here, eject the current disk, pick the next disk and move on. Or in the emulator itself, it has its own built-in GUI that's separate from this that allows you to insert and eject floppies and do things like a soft Amiga reboot and a hard Amiga reboot. It's all separated from this interface. And so there's like two interfaces. There's, a, uh, there's this interface and then there's the what I like to call the FSUEE internal interface, which kind of mimics the old 16-bit look of uh, era of that look, the 8-bit, 16-bit kind of look. And I'll show you here in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do is go grab some floppies. Um, I haven't copied them locally, so again, I have to kind of jump through some hoops here. And hopefully my NAS is not freaking out. So let's go to like system installs, let's go to 1200. And this is 3.1, so we'll go to 3.1. Once hit click my install. But again, if I go down here and click this little add files to list button, I can just pick all of these all at once and click open. And now they're gonna be available inside the emulator and I don't have to come back out here and do this. So we've got our floppy installed, we've got our, our, hard, our hard, disk, hard disk, our hard disk picked, and we're pretty much ready to hit start. Um, so uh, I guess over here we're gonna hit start. And this button here, this is the toggle between full screen. One of the things FSUE has is a really good hotkey system. It's the you know left command on the Mac keyboard. Um, Q, left command Q quits the emulator. Uh, left command A changes the various aspect ratios of the, the full screen display, which is really, really handy if you wanna quickly get your Amiga's aspect ratio looking proper. Uh, you don't have to like exit the emulator, go back out to the settings and start trying to find what aspect ratio settings to pick. Like you, you normally you'd, you'd go click on the magic check mark, you go to settings, you go down to video and you start clicking all these buttons over here. You're like, make my Amiga look right. It's all weird. It looks squished or it looks wide. You don't have to do this. You can just do left command A. It'll automatically cycle through, toggle through all the various scaling modes. Pretty slick. So we're gonna go ahead and click start. And here it goes, amazing. And yes, there are floppy drive sounds. I don't know if you're hearing them because I'm pretty sure I'm only recording audio through my microphone, unless it comes through on the mic. Now, one of the things I didn't do was enable turbo mode <laughs> for the floppy drives. So what you can do is while this emulator is up, here you can see it running, and you notice just mousing over the title bar gets you back out into Mac OS. There's no, there's no escape button you need to push to get out. So once you're out, you can click back on the interface, go back to the floppy tab, and where is the setting I just told you guys about? No, here it is. Yeah, it's under the little light switch panel. Floppy drive speed. Click, we're gonna override it. We're gonna go to turbo. So that's how you do that. And now we can just go down here, find our, our window, go back to FSUEE, and now we're back in here. And look at that, there's our, there's our HDF file, NDOS. Yay! So we'll go ahead and right click on that and format. And we're gonna call this, um, what are we gonna call this? We're gonna call this Workbench. Well, looks very familiar to all of you. Turn that off, I like my directory. No, I don't want directory cache. Fast file system, uh, yeah, sure, international mode, why not? And we'll just do a quick format. And there we go, Workbench. Now, very familiar process. I am gonna, um, of course, fast forward through all this, but I do wanna show you the, the media swap and how that works. So we'll go English, the language I speak, and not very well. Okay. No. I'm working. So, now you're faced with this. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can just go up and leave the program. And, well, now that we're actively in the emulator, that you can't go off the program. So, like, you're here to, like, 
You're like, I thought you said we could just click and leave and get out with our mouse. We didn't have to do a hotkey. Uh, once you're actively in the emulation like this, it, 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 can, it can lock your pointer to the Amiga. So um, you have to just click and hold escape. Or, no, that's not it. Oh no, what has Q done? So one of the things you can do <laughs> and, um, is press, um, oh, you know what it is, guys? I'm, just, I'm so sorry. This is a Mac and I have not, um, so I'm just, I just did alt tab or command tab on the Mac to tell the Mac that I want my F, my function keys. Okay, I'm gonna just leave, I was gonna edit this portion out, but yeah, for Mac folks, you're gonna wanna use your function keys as real function keys. Otherwise, you're gonna have some serious problems with the emulator. So just remember to flip this on. I, I have to remember to do this when I use Lightwave 3D on the, Mac, on the Mac because it also uses function keys like a lot of programs do. So that that's that's a problem. So just make sure you do that before launching the emulator. <laughs> okay, so now when you're in here, um, you can go ahead and, um, well, we're not, we're not, we're not going to abort. Don't, quick, no, sorry about that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to press um, F12. And F12 brings up the internal GUI for the emulator that I mentioned earlier. And down here, you can save your state, which means you can basically freeze in time whatever it is you're doing right here with this handy little interface. Um, you can redo a, a, you know, a reset on the Amiga. You can either do a cold uh, or um, soft reset. You can change input options and you can go through the media that you put in that media list that we added earlier. So in this case, um, it says it wants the Amiga uh, workbench floppy, right? So just highlight that, click enter, and here it is. Here's the media list that we uh, created earlier. And, and by default, it had a checkbox for an automatic save disk, so that's why that's here too. But now you just highlight that and press enter. Boom, it automatically inserts it. Okay, so one of the things you may have noticed, well, maybe you didn't notice because I fast forwarded through that, was that turbo mode's not working. You have to enable turbo mode before you launch the emulation. Turning it on after effect does, does not affect it. So once again, we're, we're faced with, we need to insert a floppy. Uh, you press the F12 key, make sure you go down and highlight the floppy. Now we only have one floppy drive enabled, that's why we're only seeing the one. You click enter, and then you go find the next floppy it wants, it wants <laughs> click enter, and off you go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and keep doing that until this is installed and we'll have a working uh, workbench. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we're back and it's done. So what we're gonna do is press F12 we're gonna click on the uh, disc here again. And we're gonna say eject, like it's asking us to do. And then we can go down, click proceed. We should come back and have ta -da, a happy workbench install. Isn't that great? There are two megs of fast memory. We've got our workbench here. And again, remember left command A changes aspect ratio. You can cycle through the different modes. So convenient, so easy. I love it to death, remember that. So you can find the one that works best for you that you feel feels the most natural. I mean, to me, the clock is more round in this aspect ratio. But then again, let's say we change the screen mode. We go to high res lace. This is an AGA Amiga after all. And we'll say use, look at that. Now this looks fairly square to me, but let's say you're one of those people that's bothered by the, the, the elongated clock. Left Amiga A, Try and find a mode where it's less less weird. Well, I guess it's always just gonna be a little bit elongated, isn't it? But this is at least more squared up. And then if you do left command F, that takes you to full screen. Brilliant, right? Amazing. We're in full screen, oh yay. Left command F takes you out of full screen. And then left command Q quits. And that's it. Now, all these settings we've just done here, none of it's been saved because I haven't smashed this little button down here again. So I'm gonna go smash, and now I have a 1200. And you see configs. Yay, now I can do configs in games. 
and it shows up along with all the games. So if let's say I'm down here, I'm like, oh my gosh, where are my Amigas at? I could just go up here and type in 12. Look at that, 1200 already found it for me. And then all I have to do is double click it. Fires it up. Oh, guess what I did? Hear how fast that floppy is now? <laughs> That's your turbo mode working. I'm gonna say uh, left command quit. I'm gonna go back over to the floppy tab. I'm going to eject the floppy. I'm also gonna go ahead and wipe out this media swap list we created by pushing the broom. While this is still selected, I'm gonna click save. So now all that floppy nonsense won't be there when I start up the emulator. Double click and there we go. We're in the good old workbench. So left command Q for quitting, left command A for cycling through aspects, F12 to bring up your internal menu options. Okay, press it again to exit. Left command Q to quit. Um, and that is, that is a nice, uh, hopefully not too long overview of FSUAE. Again, you can cross reference my WinUAE video with this one. If you're trying to see what other things do or other settings are, or uh, maybe even the Amiga process, uh, there might be things I covered in my WinUAE video on the Amiga side that I didn't cover as much here. But this was, this was mostly to show you some of the neat little tricks with FSUAE, especially the whole creating your uh, open retro account and getting access to all the uh, files that are available that you don't have to worry about. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. And then, yeah, you just go through these tabs. They're pretty self-explanatory. It's like, oh, I want an accelerator board now. I want, a, I want a 1260. Now you have a 1260, provided you have the ROM for it. Again, I don't even think it shows up if you don't have the ROM. So my ROM, I, ha I have all the ROMs, so it shows up. Um, but yeah, you can come over here and you can say, I want to turn JIT on and, and make it as fast as it possibly can. Um, again, the, the, all the things I just showed you with the 1200 booting was quote unquote real 1200 speed, nothing accelerated. Uh, I did not have JIT turned on, but you can do that here um, as well as the CD-ROM drive. And, uh, and you can just experiment with different ROMs and you can of course add your Zorro memory and your Picasso memory, it, it supports all of that. And it's, it's it, again, it's, it's very interesting. Like you don't see anywhere here, like, well, do I have to go to graphics card? You can, you can pick Picasso or you can pick UAE graphics yourself. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. And uh, remember, this is the most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel on YouTube, living up to its name. Thank you all for watching. Remember to check the description for any links. Bye-bye.